what we're going to do now is we're going to leap into the next part of the, um, the evening and I'm going to introduce our interview guest, the um, wonderful, amazing Mr. Robert Hines. Just wait one second, let me give you the introduction. <laughs> okay, so um, Robert has had a highly successful career. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to rewind? No. Oh, no. Okay. Robert has had a highly successful career as an architect. He was the lead architect for the Norman Manley Airport in Jamaica, no less. Um, and he's done beautiful buildings all around the world. And there was something inside Robert that decided he wanted to help people on a more personal, one-on-one -on -one basis, rather than the buildings, he was going to work with people. And he has um, uh, a mission to eradicate worry, doubt, and fear from people's lives in order to implement clarity and certainty in how to improve their performance and achieve things that they didn't think were achievable in their lives, which is very admirable. And Robert's actually trained with Bob Proctor from The Secret, yeah? Mm -hmm. And we're going to listen to his adversity to celebrity story right now. Thanks very much, Robert. Thank you. sketch the planes, all I wanted to do was look at them. Okay. So it was just a case of, I was fascinated about how something so large yeah, could so much people off. and actually yeah. defy the laws of gravity, take off and then end up halfway across the world. Yeah. So um, not then, knowing anything about how the mind works, not mm -hmm. knowing anything about um, these invisible laws which govern the universe, um, but just being interested in design and being interested in airplanes. Mm -hmm. And then 20 years later, I'm an airport designer. Okay, and you, you have those visions going on in your head all the time. The law of attraction just got you to where to be an airport designer. The there, airport. there were a lot of yeah. things happening which I didn't understand at the time, mm -hmm. um, and it's not until I then started my journey toward personal development yeah. that I then started to look back um, retrospectively over my life and started to see how I became an architect, why I got a lot of success in architecture at a very young age, mm -hmm. um, and then just started to review that, started to break that down, and with the knowledge that I then started to get from the training, mm -hmm. that then started to be able to really help me to understand mm -hmm. more about me. Yeah. Um, and then more how to apply a process to myself. Yeah. And then start sharing that with other people. Okay, so what was the point that made you think, okay, I'm going to down tools and I'm going to become a coach? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's <laughs> huge. I mean, <laughs> literally, it's like, that's like, why would you leave such a, and a passion as well for all these years? Mm. Why would you leave that to go and, you know, work with individual people? And what was the point? I think um, everybody asked me that. <laughs> I'll cover all that now. Um, like I said, after, all I wanted to do was architecture. And the, on the, one of the final airport projects I did, which was the, um, the airport in Kingston, Norman mm -hmm. International Airport, um, I was there for three and a half, almost four years. Um, and I started to see, 
characteristics of myself that I hadn't seen before. Okay. So there was um, a lot of the builders on the site. They were just there earning the wage. They didn't really, they didn't really exhibit any desire or any passion. And everything they were building, they were building terribly. Yeah. Absolutely terribly. <laughs> if they were going to build a wall which should have been perpendicular to the floor. It was like this. Yeah. But I was the person who then had to go and sign that off. Okay. So I would go to inspect some Toronto tiles. They weren't level, and I, I, I couldn't sign it off. Yeah. So many a times I would always end up saying to the builders, I'm really sorry, but this is going to have to be pulled up. This is going to have to be changed. And I could see the dejection in them. They had put some time, they had put effort, not yeah. very good effort. Yeah. Um, so when I then started to say to them, but you're going to have to put some more effort into doing your work because I can't sign this off because otherwise it starts to ruin my credibility. Mm -hmm. um, some of them took that as quite an insult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, and then one Friday night, they, I say, invited me. Okay. <laughs> but uh, not against my will, yeah. but invite me to a room to. Um, but I then started to say to them, you've got to start taking more um, ownership of your work. Yeah. Um, then we did see an increase in the quality of the work, but then, like I said, one Friday night, they invited me to come onto site. Mm -hmm. um, and about five of them said to me that they were really grateful okay. that someone had actually taken the time to, to pay attention, to, pay attention yeah. to them and actually then start to tell them something which could actually start to improve their work quality yeah. and people would then start looking at them differently. Okay. So over the next six months we saw such an increase in the quality of the work um, that made me feel good, that made them feel good. Yeah. Um, then one of them had the idea that he wanted to open up a juice bar okay. and he had no idea how he wanted to open a juice bar. He never shared it with anybody yeah. and he was kind enough to share that with me. Yeah. And I went home that night thinking how can I help this guy open up his juice bar? So I went back to him and I said let's me and you go down to Kingston We'll go and speak to three owners of juice bars and we'll just speak to them, ask them whether they will speak to us mm -hmm. and then we'll find out exactly what it was that they did to create their business. Yeah. How did they get the money, how did they get the inspiration to do that and then the actual practicality of how they did things. So a bit of market research, like primitive market research. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we did that with one guy called, I think his name was Trevor. Mm -hmm. And after about four months, he did not think that anyone was going to spend time letting him know how they started their business. Yeah. Um, so he was really grateful for that. And after about three months, this gentleman disappeared from sight. And when I started asking everybody else where is Trevor, they said he's opened up a juice bar. Oh my god, yeah. he did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What so I went down to visit him. He saw me in the queue. Mm -hmm. He came out and gave me the biggest hug. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he yeah. said, You were the only person who saw anything in me. Mm -hmm. You've given me the confidence to do this. You took the time out. You took me down to someone who had the business. Um, and it was just being able to extract. So he already had it within him. Yeah, as so we all just, do. Yeah. So it was just being able to help him extract that himself, get him to believe in himself, mm -hmm. and then just take him through a process that he could then start to apply this to, to mm -hmm. what he was doing. Okay. So, so that, that worked well. And yeah. I then did that with someone who wanted a t shirt printing business. Yeah. I got people to go back to university. I got people to actually come out of professions what they were in for 10, 15 years, they didn't oh enjoy it, and I got them to start thinking about re yeah. redirecting their life. And so then you started to think about redirecting yours now? Well, no, st still not at that stage. Okay. Um, we carried on, they did a fantastic job with the airport, the, yeah. the whole team. Um, and, but I really enjoyed what I was doing with these people. Mm -hmm. uh, I came back to England, and the day that I came back, somebody handed me a copy of the film called The Secret. Okay, yes. I watched that once. <laughs> I watched it twice. I watched it three times yeah. in a row. I bought, was, um, I bought seven copies. Every time I was reading it, somebody was talking about something. I gave them the book and they said, have this book, it's amazing, you should read it. So yeah, so I know what you're feeling, mm. what you're doing with that, yeah. And it was, the, it was the information that was in that book. They were talking about intangible laws. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I had always thought about when I was younger. I always, that was quite strange when I was younger. Um, <laughs> <laughs> strange, strange in the fact that I always thought that there were things out there yeah. which we couldn't see. I never had the confidence to be able to talk to anybody about this. Mm -hmm. And I started watching this film called The Secret where they were talking about different what laws. You were yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it was um, there was a one gentleman in particular on it, a guy called Bob Proctor. Yeah. And watching this movie, it was almost as if he was just talking to me. Mm -hmm. and he was talking about the law of cause and effect. He was talking about the law of gratitude. He was talking about just how to really start to um, lend yourself to the universe and the universe will then start to yield. Mm -hmm. And as long as you've got a desire, a heart's desire and you start to put in the action, then you will then start to cause variances within the universe. So hearing this was just something which really, something shifted in me yeah. after watching that film. Yeah, somebody believes in what I actually already believe, so yeah. therefore it must be true, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So
So what, what was the process from there then? Do you, um, what, what did you do? do you took a, the course with him and then... Um, from there I started to look at all the teachers from The Secret. So there was Bob Proctor, mm -hmm. there was John Asaraf, mm -hmm. there was Dr Michael Beckwith, there was Lisa Nichols. And I started to pick up any book, material, recording that I could find of these teachers. And then started to listen to audio, started to read books. And it was, it was information that felt so true. Um, they always say, once you hear the truth, you'll know the truth. Mm -hmm. And this really started to resonate with me. So at the time, I was living in Hove, and I was travelling up to work in Tottenham Court Road. So I had a two and a half hour journey to work. So you were still being an architect? Yeah, yeah, I was, still, I was still working with an architecture. Mm -hmm. um, so I was travelling for four hours a day. Yeah. My usual activities on the train would be reading the Daily Metro, mm -hmm. um, listening to music, and probably doing a crossword. Yeah. And then once I started to listen to all this information, I completely emptied out my iPod. Yeah. I got a ton of audio books and I just started listening to how you can have two people doing the same job. Mm -hmm. One becomes very successful yeah. and one just becomes mediocre and settles for normality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was because they were then starting to live their life in alignment with mm -hmm. these universal laws. Yeah. So another two years went by. Um, I was studying a hell of a lot of personal development material and I was starting to see that my attitude was changing. Yeah. Um, I was starting to see that I was getting pay rises at work. Yeah. I was going the extra mile, I was doing, I was just living my life in harmony with these laws, still not really conscious of what I was doing, but just knowing that I was doing something which was slightly different, which was in harmony with universal laws, mm -hmm. and I was getting absolutely great results from it. Yeah. And then I heard that Bob Proctor was coming over to Italy. Okay. Uh, I only ever thought that he stayed in the States, and having studied his work for the previous two years, I said to my girlfriend at the time, who's now my fiance, mm -hmm. um, I, I have to go and see this gentleman in Italy. He was in a place called Rimini in yeah, Bologna. Yeah. Um, and then we got we bought tickets and we went over there. And that was when I could then actually see Bob Proctor live on stage. Yeah. So again, seeing him on stage, that created another shift within yeah, me. Yeah. So so okay, so you've got you you you're on this journey and you've at some point you've made a decision that to to leave architecture and just be not just be become a, an amazing coach. <laughs> um, what, what was your greatest challenge and what was your scariest moment in all that transition? Um, I think, that, and I can remember this so well, the scariest thing for me was the decision to leave my beloved architecture. Um, after having been involved for 21 years, um, seeing this gentleman on stage, um, he was there for a two day seminar and after two hours, I made the decision that I was going to leave architecture and I wanted to do what that gentleman was doing because I could see how much he changed my life mm -hmm. and I really wanted to be able to influence other people's lives with that. And so that was, it was a very, very scary decision. Yeah. Um, I spoke about it at length with my fiance at the time yeah. um, because the salary that I was earning was the main salary in the household. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just, we knew that it, we would then be relying on my fiance's salary. Yeah. I would need to get a part-time job, and it was just one of the scariest decisions I've ever made because it was walking away from architecture. Uh, would it work? Yeah, going walking into the unknown, like into the mist, and you think, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just not getting the support from people who I thought I would get support from. Yeah, yeah. Tell me that story. Tell me, I've been there. Yeah. yeah. I bet, I bet quite a few of you have been through that story as well. That you think, okay, people that you're going to rely on, they're going to support me because they've been there all the time. And mm. As soon as you make a decision for your life, it's like, oh, where are they? They've gone. Okay, so you're on your own. Mm. Apart from the ones who get you, who really understand and you. And sometimes you, know. you, you can get support from the, from the people who you least expect. Yes. And yeah. sometimes the people who you think are going to give you the most support, you get the least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's funny how that works. <laughs> so, so how do you actually overcome all this scariness? And I mean, what, what, how? There must have been a point where you thought, right, I'm fine now. Everything's fine. The scary thing has passed, and I'm now doing what I, doing what I love, and it's everything's okay. Okay, this fine period didn't, didn't come for about nine months, nine twelve months. Yeah, yeah. So just going through that period after making the decision, uh, one, it was uh, deciding or letting my boss know that I didn't want to do architecture. So I was an associate at that at that point. I had a three month notice. So I went through the period of am I doing the right thing? Should I be doing this? Um, then it was letting my mum know, my my dad know family, um, why was I then, my mum said to me once, uh, why do you, I said I wanted to become a life coach, Yeah. and she said I didn't know you could swim, 
so they can start to learn these, so they can start to implement these success principles. Oh wow, that's amazing. That's that's like huge big vision, huge big vision. Yeah. So how far are you along that route? Um, I'm going good with that. I, yeah. I'm now being invited to talk to a lot of young entrepreneurs. Okay. Um, one of the businesses that I've built is a company called Vima. Okay. Um, yeah. And that is that I'm one of a mentor to quite a few hundreds of um, young yes, people now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's like I say, they come through school. They some of the things that they're getting that self belief. Mm. It's starting to under, little small things that you can do to start to be able to um, to take the the warrior out of you and not not become the victim. Yeah. Yeah. Fabulous. With a little bit of time we've got left, if you could just tell um, to our group here how people can get some more of you and what is it, if you've got something to, to share with them that you've got enough of. Yeah, sure. Like that, yeah? Um, I started, to, I created a campaign which is called Freebie Friday. And um, like I say, when you're, I had a lot of negativity around me when I was younger. And for you, you need to start to eradicate the negativity and start to influence, get more positivity around you. Mm -hmm. So what I've created is something which is called Freebie Friday, and Freebie Friday is just, I speak about, it's a small, short topic, either a success tip, or maybe an idea that maybe someone hasn't really, uh, a, a different way of looking at something. Mm -hmm. So every Friday I release a video to anyone who's on my list. Yeah, I've seen those, yeah. Um, and that's just a way of being able to have a regular flow of positivity into your life. But I know some people, they maybe the people that they're hanging around with now, or their circle of influence, isn't very positive, they may have an idea to start a business, to um, find their life partner, mm -hmm. to um, be able to start some type of personal development. And if you haven't got that supportive network around you, it can be extremely difficult to be able to raise your, your internal vibration. Yeah. So I've got something which is called Freebie Friday. Mm -hmm. um, it's a short video which goes out to my list every Friday. Mm -hmm. um, something else I do is a Think and Grow Rich Mastermind group. Right. And this is where I get between eight or ten people together who have got a vision, who have got a dream, yeah. and then I take them through a really fantastic book. Many people may know this book, but it's called Think and Grow Rich. Yeah. How many people have read Think and Grow Rich? Yeah? No? No? You've got to read it. It's the, it's the, Bible, it's the Bible, it's the God, the daddy of all personal development books. Um, by Napoleon Hill. Yeah, you've got to read it. Or if you notice all the top um, executives, all the top people, Branson and Sugar and all of those guys, they swear by this book as one of them. It's on their shelf, so read that book. Okay. So, so your mastermind is based on that book. Yeah, this yeah. book is it's, um, just a quick story about the book. It was um, commissioned by a guy called Andrew Carnegie, mm -hmm. and he was, he was the wealthiest person at the start of the 20th century. And he amassed a, a fortune of wealth through steel. Um, he spent half of his life amassing the wealth, and the second half of his life giving the money away. So he built um, Carnegie Hall. Anything which says Carnegie is from Andrew Carnegie. Um, but he was looking for somebody to be able to uh, distill the process that he used to create his wealth. And he found a very young reporter by the name of Napoleon Hill. Mm -hmm. He introduced Napoleon to a lot of his wealthy friends, to captains of industry. And Napoleon spent the next 25 years interviewing over 500 of the world's most successful <coughs> yeah. people. Um, and then he distilled this into a um, principles of achievement. So I now help people to really, un a lot of people read this book and they, sometimes they don't understand it, it's 13 chapters, they don't understand it, they, it's written in very old language. Yeah, yeah, um, I, it took me a, a while to get into the language and get into the rhythm of the language, yeah. but it's amazing, it's an amazing book, yeah. So we, I help get, get people together in a, a living week um, series, um, not only do I take them through the book, but I also just get help tell them success, how I translate that book into my life and how I've become successful through mm -hmm. that and then help them to create a vision for themselves, help them to discover their purpose, and then help them to use those principles to be able to then get themselves to where they want to be. Yeah, fabulous. So how, how do, if anybody wants to get involved, how do they get involved with uh, You go to my website, yeah. which is www.rchines.com. <laughs> You'll put it on the board, yeah, yeah. Um, that you can find out all the information from there is um, an FAQ sheet, yeah. There's a short video of me telling you what that what it's about. Yeah. And then from there, you, I usually do two to three groups. Yeah. And then at the same just, time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can run those consecutively. Yeah. Um, and then you can fall into one of those groups, and then we, we then start the course. Yeah. And free, Freebie Friday is a, is a free campaign. Right. And this is down there. My Freebie Friday is uh, rchines.com forward slash freebie dash Friday. Yeah, good idea.
where the pain that works. <laughs> oh. I'll just jot it down to make sure it's, it gets put up here. Freebie.com, is that? Yeah, it's yeah. freebie-friday.com. Oh, okay. Great. I'll put that up for you as well. Fantastic. So have you got a word, um, a final word of wisdom for the group? Just something that you encourage them and or inspire them? I'd say what, to really have belief within yourself. Um, what Dream big is the first thing. Yes. Um, don't let anybody tell you that you can't do something. Yeah. Because uh, whatever it is that you believe that you want to do, you can do it. There's many examples of people who have done probably what you want to do now. So there's no reason to say that you can't do that yourself. Um, make sure that you get a group of supportive people around you. Because And be careful who you share your dream with. Because sometimes there's a lot of dream stealers, a lot of naysayers out there who will, they find pleasure in being able to tell you that you can't do something. So really get build a good network around you, but understand that you can't do it on your own. Yeah. You do need a supportive team. Um, and it's very interesting, I was talking to, I think it was Nikki, um, one, of the, one of the activities that they have, one of the activities that I do every day is meditate. Yeah. Uh, and that has helped me to, to hear the internal voice within yeah. and really start to tap into, to tap into yourself. You have to learn to trust yourself. Yeah, that's the Just, thing. Um, that is, know, yeah. we, we've all run from intuition, and if you can start to really tap into that intuition, mm -hmm. you'll be able, you'll be guided um, to do the things which you think are, are without your reach, but they are most certainly within your reach. Uh, thank you, Robert. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, cheers. Okay, so we're going to go to a break now. So if anybody wants to have a chat with Robert about his course, about anything that. Um, um, it's been brought up. Now's the time to do that. We've got 10 minutes before we come back and we can be for the next um, section. So thanks, Robert. You're welcome. Thank you.